Well, guys, I think I'm going to get started with Andy's bio and introduce the, the show today a little bit. And then right at the top of the hour, we can get into his presentation. I'm excited you're here today. I'm Judy Thompson. I'm the Director of Clinical Education with Ava. And this is Ivy League Learning. So today we're going to talk about data. Well, I'm not. Andy's going to talk about data and the vascular access practice. A couple little announcements. We were just chatting about Ava SM. Mark your calendars for October. It's going to be an amazing, amazing conference this year. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce Andy. Andy Rillahan. He has 15 years in healthcare in this technology and industry. And before his current role, he worked for one of the largest global electronic record companies that you'd know the name of. And he's performed such roles as business development, consulting, implementation, and training. And he loves data. So kind of, he's another one of those Shelley DeVries data nerds, an excellent speaker. I've heard him speak, I've heard the presentation, you're gonna love every second of it. There are, are no CEs that are involved in this program. So, but this is for the information, just information. But without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Andy and he can do his magic. Thanks so much. Thanks, Judy. I am going to share my screen. In, in, in traditional CE credit form, even though there is no CEs, uh, this is just a little bit about me, but Judy already went through that, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I, I am an employee of Nexus Medical, and I've been there for a few years. Uh, as Judy mentioned, uh, my, my background is not, I don't have a traditional uh, background in vascular access. Um, I, I came from the electronic health world. And then as uh, this term called big data came into play in healthcare, um, I kind of dove headfirst into that and started to think about how does uh, data apply to um, different disease states around chronic condition management, population health, value-based care, um, and spent my last few years at that company um, focusing on that for a wide number of uh, large health systems across the United States. And we started to think about, well, how does, how does this apply to a very niche specialized field of vascular access? And there's a number of different ways you can look at data. Um, one of the ways we like to look at data is um, that can I just switch to presentation mode? Does it did it work or we just need to just do this? Sometimes we can, see, we can see your deck. Okay, that's fine. As long as we can see yeah. it. Sometimes when you switch to presentation mode, it gets all wonky. Um, but one of the ways we like to think about data is um, broadly, how many IVs are we using? And is that's a that's a proxy for uh, bad outcomes. Uh, delays in therapy, all the things that we don't want to, to have happen to our patients. And, you know, when you look at the, the gross number in the United States, we use a lot of peripheral IVs. There's 350 million that we use, but there's only 34 million admissions. So, you know, right off the bat, we can tell something's off. And well, that number, you know, it, it, it may not stick. One of the things we think about is, well, every time there's a failure, there's a winner and a loser. You know, somebody benefits and somebody um, suffers and is 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 paying the price. And the person that is, is suffering is almost certainly the patient. And, and it's not only the patient, it's it's the caregiver as well, who is having to manage um, what somebody else did. Um, the trying to manage the outcomes and and really trying to go manage something that they may not even be skilled at or properly trained at doing. <clears throat> and if we boil it down, and this is real data that we've taken, and I've 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 made up this uh, this name of a health system called Baseline Health. So this is a fake health system name. But if we if we take it and we boil it down to a community hospital and we look at um, a community hospital that has three to four hundred beds. Um, the number of IVs that they're using per admission is, is between four and eight. And they're putting in about 80,000 catheters on the inpatient side. And they're spending a lot of time doing that, about 26,000 hours, almost 13 FTEs. 
and when you think about cost accounting and, and healthcare is not really good at cost accounting, the cost per bed per year to go treat and manage just the insertion, let alone if the patient gets an infection, the delays in treatment, the length of stay impacts, et cetera, it's, 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 it's staggering. And so there's a lot of room for us to go make an improvement. And if we take that down and we boil it down even further and we look at, well, what does that mean on a unit level, right? So if we really make it local, right? What happens at the unit? Not a unit, and if you, this is a typical med surge unit. It's about an 18 bed med surge unit and they have a daily census of 12 patients. They see about 686 patients every single year. They're buying this fictitious hospital that's not actually fictitious, is buying 12,180 IVs. That's how many IVs they're inserting. Now, we know that um, all of those patients came from, or most of those patients came from the ED. They came with an IV. So while they might have about three, a little over three peripheral IVs in this unit, they're placing 4.2 peripheral IVs. So over 2,000 peripheral IVs are, are pure failure in this, in this institution, meaning they did not last the duration um, for a med surge unit that has an average stay of, of five to six days. And, and, we, and we take that and we boil it down, they're, they're spending almost half of their patients are getting a restart every single day. And so, you know, I, I, I take these um, data points and say that with very, very little information, you can start to go analyze and break down what is going on in a unit, what's going on uh, at your health system, um, how is your health system performing without having tons of information. There's really simple ways that we can go break all of this down. But as you guys know, and your vascular access specialist, you, you're into perfection, you're into first success, you're into doing it right the first time. And so if we did it right the first time, and that was the mentality across the organization, what would that look like? And, you know, at, at, at Nexus, we've spent a ton of time thinking about what does that mean? And what does the literature say? What is the, what does the, the body of evidence say? And, and we've, we've done a lot with uh, the PIV5 rights. And if you've spent any time and been to fast AVA conferences, you've probably heard of the PIV5, PIV5 rights, but um, those are kind of the, the five core elements, the core essential ingredients that make up uh, what we would call best practice care for peripheral IV therapy. So having somebody that really understands how it's inserted, having the right insertion technique, aseptic, ultrasound guided, selecting the proper vein that's, that's going to... Um, uh, be suitable for the medication and the duration of therapy, uh, supplies that are meant to last, and, and assessing it and properly assessing it um, at the right duration based on the medication and based on uh, the type of IV that's inserted. And when we can do that, we, we're confident that we're going to get really good results. And we're not going to have four, five, six peripheral IVs per stay. We're going we're gonna to be closer to... Um, we're going to be closer to one peripheral IV per day. And if we can achieve 90%, so if we set 90% and we anchor ourselves in 90% success, we go from almost 13 FTEs to less than two FTEs, just in, in the bulk time it takes to go insert an IV. Um, and you think about what that does and what you can do with, you know, almost 20,000 hours to over 20,000 hours that you're saving in time and what that would mean for bedside care, what that would mean for nursing satisfaction, um, what that would mean for patient satisfaction, not sticking them so many times. It, it really is um, quite staggering. And so what we want to go do is help uh, enable a vascular access specialist and a vascular access team um, to improve the outcomes in all three phases. So we think about it before, during, and after um, to achieve the five rights. And, and to do this, we like to think about a process, right? So if we're just providing information, we're just providing data, um, 
we're really just providing more data for data sake. And your organization is swimming in data. They're swimming in information. And so what, what we like to try and break down is how do we go out, take it and make it actionable, make it useful so that um, you can actually do something with the information that you have, because it's, it's all about trying to go improve the practice, improve the outcomes. And so we, we, we take the DMAIC approach to find what the problem is, understand what your current state is, wherever that may be, whether that's a unit, whether that's the health system, whether that's an, an individual hospital, understand where your current state is, um, analyze what the solutions are anchored in evidence, implement solutions and, and control and sustain the results. And if we take that approach and we start to apply it towards a system and actually having a system for vascular access, and I won't go through every single one of these points, you can have all this content. Um, we start to go look at, well, how do we go apply the evidence, the PIV fibrides, the evidence-based best practice towards an actual process that we can take and implement at any point at any time in a health system to begin to go define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And, and <clears throat> what we've done, we've spent a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time over the last 18 months is building out that system that allows us to go automate all of that uh, within a health system. So if I look at not only what are the, the supplies and the time, but how can we go and take um, and pinpoint what the current state is. So not only, well, how much are we doing, but why is it discontinued? What was the location of, where was the location of the IV placed? Um, where was the location of the IV placed and how long was the catheter? And then what's the variance in the outcome? So if we can start to go pinpoint those and compare the different results by unit, by placement type, by product, by how we assess it, we can really start to refine in an automated way without a lot of manipulation, where do we need to go focus our time? Because everyone is not, there's, there's no health system that's, that's ready to go sign up for more and, and bring on more resources. So every, every health system's resource strapped. Um, everyone's facing the same challenges with, uh, with, with staffing. So if we can go make it simpler, we can, we can start to utilize the resources that are there to go make improvements in a more incremental way and look at, well, how do we go look at complications? Not just what are our complications, but what are our complications rel relative to products, location, uh, catheter to vein ratio, all the things that are highly, highly specific to um, vascular access. And we do that in a way that we can go take all of the information we can pull it out of the EMR, and regardless of what you are documenting or how you're documenting things in your EMR, we can take we take that information and we normalize it and put it into a database that can make sense for vascular access. And that's what we've built, and we are ready to go work with health systems across the United States to go start to use these tools to go understand where they're at and improve outcomes. And so we can take this down and what I'm showing you is we can take it down to a very, very granular level to look at it and look at the outcomes in a variety of different ways to get specific. Because if there's anything that I've learned about vascular access is that it's a very nuanced practice and, and getting down to the right outcomes means we need to get into the granular detail of what's going on in a unit, what's going on um, with the insertion practice and the um, the way it's assessed, how frequently it's assessed, and can we can we understand the variance in the frequency in which those things occur, so that we can start to go pinpoint where we can go make improvement. And if we can do that, we can really really quickly analyze what needs to be done, and and the information then has a lot of power. And and if we can do that. And we can look at, oh, we, we have a wide variation in our practice. We have high complication rates. We have, we have this, all this variations yielding different outcomes. How do we go standardize and where do we start? We can really start to go actually go make and, and, and put improvement in place. And unless we can go measure what we're doing and measure how we are 
doing with the interventions that we're providing, it makes it really hard to tell our hospital leadership that the things that we're doing are working. And we put in a, a new product, we put in a new process, we did ultrasound guided training, um, and here's the benefit that it yielded. Here's the impact, and, and, it, and it should empower us to go do more. And once we've done that, how do we go? Um, how do we go control that that outcome? So we've achieved we've achieved a um, we've achieved a good outcome. We've 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 started to show that we can go scale this. How do we go control it? And looking at it continuously, looking at it re the data real time in a more automated way will help show administration where do we go next, and then. And then how are we sustaining and that we are sustaining them? So the, 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 the investment of time, the investment of energy is worth it. And so we, we spend a lot of time thinking about data and how data is not, it's not the answer, right? Data inherently is not going to solve your insertion problem. It's not going to solve your care and maintenance problem. What it will do is it's going to pinpoint how you can focus time because no organization whether you have a vascular access team, a huge one, a small one, uh, or or none, is going to be able to flip a switch overnight and achieve one peripheral IV per stay. It just won't happen. And so it's it's really about how you pinpoint and how you focus your time and energy to go say, can we do a proof of concept? Can we do a pilot? Can we start in one specific area and show an improvement, measure the improvement, present the improvement to leadership. And so, you know, a lot of this comes down to where is your organization at today? And, you know, there may be organizations that are ready to jump in head first. They've been doing it for a while. They've been at it for a while. They're, they're, they've been able to show through brute force um, and, and really robust manual data collection that they, they've, they've, they've demonstrated really good results and they're ready to to spread their wings and bring it even further. But most of the organizations that we're talking to today are on the right. <laughs> they're they're um, resource strapped, um, they're stressed. They don't have the capabilities, or at least they don't feel like they have the capabilities and the support to go do what they think is the right thing to do. And, and there's you, you, you often sense a level of frustration. And that's where we wanna step in and help because we wanna make the ability to go showcase what an, a vascular access team can do, a vascular access specialty team can do, we want to make that easier. And we want to go provide a data foundation and a data centric tool that will help them uh, showcase what, what can really be done when you have a specialized vascular access team really leading and managing the outcomes for all vascular access lines across the health system. That that's the goal. It's it's a it's a journey, right? It's not a it's not an overnight thing, but I think it's something that uh, with the right focus and force, it's something that we can go achieve. So we, we like to say, hey, really, you got to start where you're at. It's a proof of concept. Um, really look at where your organization where your organization's at. What's the leader that you can go to that can help champion your effort? Who is, what's the unit of the hospital that you could start at to start in a unit versus trying to boil the ocean across the entire health system, playing the political game. And then ultimately, you know, at the same time that we're talking about starting small, um, really being bold and having a bold vision, thinking about what you want as the ideal future state in the health system, thinking about the patient and not the contracts, the, the the politics, all the things that get in the way. Um, how do we measure everything that we're doing, and and understanding that hurdles, politics, all of those things are real, and you, you need to have a plan around them. So, um, I know this was meant to be meant to be short and brief. So I I just flew through that. Um,